Hello, beautiful people. My name is Athel, talking about marriage, relationships, and getting what you want from them. And today's episode follows along from yesterday's episode, where yesterday I talked about not doing the thing, i.e. going from some sort of major breakup or divorce, and then immediately jumping into a new relationship. And in this episode, I'm going to talk about when is the right time to start doing the thing? When is it good to start dating? When is it good to start looking for a new relationship? And essentially, uh, we're going to look at the three concerns I talked about yesterday as why you shouldn't do the thing as, you know, are you meeting these three concerns now, which then is the green light to really start going forward. So the first one is, are you out of the low energy state that you were in when the divorce finished or the big breakup happened. Because anytime you have a major relationship breakup, it is incredibly draining. Uh, you become completely exhausted. Most people have some good crash period of uh, you know, at least a few days, maybe a couple of weeks, where literally everything is drained from you. And it can take a number of weeks or months to regain your energy. The concern is if you're in a low energy state, you attract another low energy person into your life and then you end up with a really low energy, unfun relationship. So the question is, are you out of that low energy state? Are you having fun again? Are you getting out? Are you doing the, the activities you like? Are you doing the hobbies you enjoy? Are you being active? Are you eating right? Are you exercising again? Are you doing all the self-care, taking care of you things that you can be doing to basically just simply make you feel better and have a higher energy state? And just like low attracts low, a higher energy state will tend to attract a higher energy state person to be in a relationship with. So if you are literally taking those few weeks or months or whatever it takes to get to a high energy state can save you so much so much hassle over the long term if you attract some into your life that is in, also in a good place the second concern is are you still emotionally bound up in the relationship that just ended are you still mad about it are you still sad about it have you reached that place where you can be somewhat more objective and say, okay, I understand why that relationship ended. Do, do you understand the, the, the explanations why it ended? Not necessarily that things people did were excusable or not, but do you understand the story arc that got you to where you ended up? Uh, have you started to take action in terms of the things that you could change about yourself or the approaches you take now that you've learned the lessons from the, the relationship that ended. And especially, are you still in a state where you're still angry uh, or resentful of either men or women in general, depending which sex you are or which you're attracted to? Because if you are still in essentially emotionally tied up in the old relationship, you're still mad, you're still sad, uh, you resentful of woman or resentful of man or whatever it is, when you bring that into a dating relationship, you're only going to find someone who tolerates that and will want to be in a relationship with you who has terrible self-esteem, issues of their own, and uh, willing to tolerate being in a relationship with someone that's still a bit messed up, which means the messed up, which means you just got yourself into a relationship with a messed up person. The third concern is, are you trying to avoid a negative as opposed to go towards a positive? Are there still some sort of logistical life problem things that you have that you are trying to avoid? Um, you know, you need a place to live. You don't have enough income. You're trying to figure out what to do with the kids. Um, do you have a bunch of life problems for which you see a relationship as a solution? Um, you know, are you avoiding a negative instead of going to a positive? Do you have these logistical things that you need to fix first? Because if you have logistical needs where you need to be in a relationship to have your life work, that means you approach those relationships from a very weak place. You, you make yourself dependent on the other person. And then once you're in that relationship, you lose the motivation and the momentum to fix those problems yourself, which means you can often always be weak to that person. 
So I think those are three key things. Do you have enough energy? Are you emotionally past it? And are you self-sustaining and supporting where you don't actually need another relationship to have your life in general work? And you need to look at yourself um, through that matrix. And you also need to look at potential partners through that matrix. Um, you may be in a great place, but then if you are getting attracted to someone who is still um, sort of really depressed and down about their own rela their prime relationship ending, they are still messed up about their ex-partner, and they are desperately needy to have a place to live in some form of income, and you're the lucky winner, then you know you are buying into a relationship that is going to be problematic. And the risk is when one or both of these people have defects in any of these three factors that you're looking to set yourself up for a transitional relationship, one that only lasts a short time. And it may be good for what it is, um, but it can also be terribly damaging and time consuming and just be a big sort of chicane in your life where you waste six months to a year investing time and energy and effort into this relationship instead of yourself and being self-supporting and it costs you in the long term. So, so but basically hit the dating market and once your energy is good you're not mostly messed up about the prior relationship and you're self-supporting and the relationship isn't to fix a life problem. Um, and absolutely nothing stops you from getting out of the house meeting people, having fun, enjoying life, having good experiences. You just have to realize that until you get all this together, you're just a little bit susceptible to missing red flags, uh, being attracted to someone who's going to be a real problem long term. And, you know, you just have to be really mindful and conscious of that. Yeah. And I understand that's all logical, logical advice. And it is the version of the don't do the thing speech in reverse form. Um, so just be careful. Guard yourself a little bit. Anyway, I think that's about it. Um, I hope you liked the video. Like, share, comment, subscribe, and all that good internet stuff. And I'll talk to you tomorrow.